Hello everyone and welcome into this new video about photogrammetry. Today we're going to learn how to transform a 360 video taken by the One X3 into some 3D model with textures. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So um, let's get into it. So before we can start doing anything with the 360 footage, we're going to need to convert the native files which are comprised of the two lenses with heavily distorted images into an equirectangular image. Now this is the typical way that 360 photos and videos are represented. It looks like this, right? It's very stretchy at the poles but it's somewhat readable in the middle. The way you do this is usually through the Insta360 app. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So you just have to load your video file and then directly click export select the tab on the right which is going to output the raw 360 footage and not the reframed footage now typically what we do is that we reframe we the uh, with some keyframes and uh, you can do some camera movements and change the projection but here we're not interested in doing this we want all the data that got captured during the video recording so exporting this is going to give us a video file that has an aspect ratio of two by one, right? It's twice wider as it is tall. And this video is going to be real time. So here in my example, I was just walking around with a selfie stick and a 360 camera at the top. So it's obviously going to be very slow and we're not going to be using all the images of the video because what you need for photogrammetry to work well is enough separation between different poses and at 24 frames per second which was the rate at which i was recording that video at the time while walking slowly it's way too tight you don't have enough separation between two successive frames for the photogrammetry software to do anything relevant with it so what we're gonna do is subsample to do that, you could use any nonlinear video editor. So, you know, Premiere Pro, After Effects. Uh, here I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve, but whatever it is that you want to use, you can. Even Blender can do it. So, what you're going to do is load the video that you just exported, so the one in a two by one ratio. Make sure that in the project settings in DaVinci Resolve, you have the right resolution because by default, it's going to put you into a full HD timeline and then you could have like Ultra HD, but still a 16 by nine ratio and that's not what we want. We really want to have the exact same dimensions as the 360 footage in equirectangular form. So here the size, because it was the 5.7K, is 5760 by 2880 pixels. Once we have this, we can just drop our footage onto a new timeline. We're just going to right click on it, change clip speed, and then we're going to enter something like a thousand percent, maybe 2000 would be better. It just depends on how fast you were moving while you were capturing the footage. You typically need to have a good amount of separation. It's kind of hard to quantify. It, it just needs to be sufficiently different from the previous frame, but still not too far off so that there's going to be good amounts of information uh, between those frames. It's really like a trial and error process. If you're experiencing a lot of reconstruction errors, maybe you need to have more frames or fewer frames. So you really need to experiment. It's on a case by case basis. So in order to export the 360 video footage that we downsampled in DaVinci Resolve, we're going to select a video export, of course, and here I can choose JPEG, you could choose TIFF, or you could choose any other format, for example, PNG, but JPEG is usually good enough. It will add an extra layer of compression, so if you really care about it, you could just export the first video in ProRes 422, uh, from the Insta360 Studio app, and then here export in TIFF, for example, or PNG, something that has lossless compression or no compression at all. And that's gonna generate your series of images that are gonna have the two by one ratio, which are gonna be the equirectangular photos. Now I'm gonna show you the easy way. So if you're using AGSoft Metashape, whether it is the standard or the professional edition, it does have this very, very neat trick of using directly the equirectangular photos for photogrammetry. 
Now the way you're going to do this is that you're going to import all your equirectangular photos, the ones that we just generated using DaVinci Resolve, and under Tools, Camera Calibration, and here, instead of frame, we're just gonna select spherical. And then we just click OK, and that's gonna apply this setting for all the images that we just imported into the workspace. And then the only thing left to be done is to click on workflow, align images, select sequence, because it was a sequence because it was a video, and that's just gonna help the software go faster, basically. It will manage more efficiently to find all the correspondences between the photos because it knows that it's a sequence and that's exactly what it was. If you're having any trouble with the camera alignment phase, it's probably a good idea to try the estimated instead of the sequential setting, but it tends to take a lot longer. And in this case, it was not necessary. So you might as well try this setting first. And if it doesn't work, go back to estimated. The second way to use 360 degree photos for photogrammetry is by first splitting the equirectangular photos into multiple perspective projections. One front facing projection, a back facing projection and right and left facing projections. That way, any photogrammetry software is capable of aligning and using these photos to reconstruct the scene in 3D. It is a pre-processing step that basically transforms our special and specific 360 degree photos into something more standard, like what comes out of a regular camera. Some photogrammetry softwares, such as Reality Capture or 3DF Zephyr, do not natively support equirectangular photos as an input. This technique allows us to use whatever photogrammetry software we wish to use, and it's completely free. So, one good way of doing this is to use Meshroom. Meshroom is another photogrammetry software it is completely free, it is open source. It's awesome, although it's a bit slow compared to commercial alternatives. But it has the significant advantage of being completely free. Now here, we're not going to use this software to do the photogrammetry process itself, but just to prepare the equirectangular photos and use the result in Metashape and Reality Capture. So in Meshroom, which you can download easily from the official website, you can start by importing your equirectangular photos into the workspace. Then, in the node graph at the bottom of the screen, we right-click in the empty space and select Utils, and then Split 360 Images. This is the block that is going to do all the magic. The first thing that we need to change is the input. We're going to select the folder that actually contains all the equirectangular photos. Then, we're going to change the number of splits from 2 to 4. Lastly, we're going to select the output file extension. Here I select JPEG, but you could also select something that doesn't do any lossy compression like TIFF or PNG. Here the software tells us that it might be better for us to save the project file so it's easier to find the output files. I do recommend you do that. Then in order to launch the process itself, we can right click on the node and select Compute. All those 360 images are going to be split into four perspective projections. This is what they look like. Here, every photo is going to have a 110 degrees of field of view, and each view direction is saved into its own folder number from 0 to 3. When importing the split photos into Metashape, we choose to put all of them into the same chunk. We also need to make sure that the reference preselection is set to estimated and not sequential. That is because although each viewpoint is indeed a sequence, all four sequences are put one after the other. If we select sequential, Metashape will have a really, really hard time correlating each one of the sequences with the others. Now let's compare the results that we get with Metashape. The one that used the 360 degree photos directly and the one that used the splitted images. 
Let's start with the one that used the 360 images directly. The settings used for the camera alignment are the following. Accuracy was set to highest, reference preselection was set to sequential, key point limit was 50,000, tie point limit was 10,000, and the option exclude stationary tie points was checked. For the mesh generation, everything was left to the default value with the exception of the quality and the face count, ultra high and high respectively. For the texture generation, four 8K maps have been used. All the other settings have been left to their default value. We can see that all the cameras successfully aligned. We can check this by clicking this camera icon on the toolbar at the top. The camera poses are shown by spheres, confirming that we're indeed using the 360 photos directly. We can visually check that the camera poses are exactly on top of the path that I followed when I filmed the scene. No camera is shown to be where it's not supposed to be, so that's a good sign. The total amount of faces generated is around 36 million, which is a quite high resolution mesh. Overall, I would say that the mesh looks pretty accurate to the real world scene. The tree is not the most clean part of the mesh, but that's to be expected since all the small branches are always hard to reconstruct using photogrammetry. One interesting thing to observe in Metashape is the confidence color map. By selecting the confidence color map instead of the textured view in the upper toolbar, false colors are applied to the mesh, showing how confident the software is in the reconstruction of each face of the mesh. Blue means that the accuracy is good, red means that the software had to guess the geometry of the scene in this particular location and that it's not quite sure if it's accurate or not. Overall, we can see that all the walls and the ground are very well reconstructed, but all the rooftops and faraway surfaces are not that well reconstructed. This is perfectly normal given the data set that was used. The closer you are to an object, the more detail you're going to get. Now, let's take a quick look at the mesh that used the splitted images and compare that to the previous case. The settings used for the mesh reconstruction are slightly different since for some odd reason the process would not finish properly due to a lack of free space on the disk to store intermediate results, despite having more than 700 gigabytes of free space. All the settings are the same except the quality of the mesh which was set to high instead of highest. Right from the start we can see that not all the images were successfully aligned. Only 1,263 out of the 1,636 images got aligned properly. It's still a good result, and it's to be expected that some of the images that do not contain much unique details will fail to align. Overall, the scene seems to have reconstructed properly with no weird bits sticking out of walls or ghost objects appearing twice or anything like that. Now, of course, since the highest setting could not be used, the amount of triangles generated is about 10 times less than for the case using the 360 photos directly. But if we use the same settings exactly, the quality is comparable whether we use the splitted images or the original 360 images. And now, just for comparison's sake, let's take a look at what Reality Capture produced from the same set of splitted images. Using the default high quality settings, a mesh with 13 million faces has been generated. Almost all the images have successfully been aligned. Only 11 out of the 1,636 images could not be aligned. The overall quality of the mesh is quite good, as it usually is with reality capture. So, to recap the whole video quickly, it is definitely possible to generate high quality meshes from the 360 degree videos or photos using either Metashape and the 360 photos directly, or by splitting the 360 degree photos into multiple perspective views using the free tools available in Meshroom, for example. Any photogrammetry software can then be used to produce pretty good results. The main advantage of this technique is how much easier it is to capture a scene quickly by just walking around it once with a 360 degree camera, as opposed to making sure that there is enough overlap between consecutive photos and that the scene has been captured from all the interesting angles in order to not miss any detail. And that's it. I hope you learned something useful watching this video, and if so, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye!